Hello there. What's in the bag for 2021 seems a very popular video at the moment, so I thought I'd make one. Only trouble is, my bag changes every week, so I'm just going to do what's in the bag for this week's video. The video will be in three parts. A look at the clubs that I'm going to play, playing the clubs on the course, and then a bit more detail on the irons that I've just played. Let's go. Starting with the woods then. These are Walter Hagen laminated woods as we can see the layers of wood there in the face and these have got a plain face insert with five screws and on the sole we have Walter Hagen the Hague this model was introduced about 1980 and we can see quite an unusual shaft on these you can see uh, the taper all happens at one point pretty much uh, and it's a CF3 flex which is a about a, a regular flex shaft moving on to the irons these are george nickel pin splitter model the z i'm not sure what the z signifies i have seen uh, these with outer letter and also with a letter q but the basic shape of these um, has been around for a long time which, which is why i asked the question are they the most popular british club um, ever I wanted to add ever because it seems to be something that's popular in YouTube videos. Uh, but yeah, they, they were produced from the 1930s right up into the 1960s. And the, the design barely changed. These are lined face clubs, as you can see. But there are dot faced ones, some of the really urgent early versions as well. Uh, finished sole. And on the bottom there, we can see the hand uh, mark. This is what's known as a cleat mark and early club manufacturers would use these to identify their uh, their clubs and Nichols used the what they call the hand of friendship um, on a lot of their clubs sometimes it's on the sole sometimes it'll be on the the back of the head um, very nice ferrules and the shafts are true temper rocket shafts and you can see that or not very thin band on there and the grips uh, these are a set of original uh, leather wrap grips in very good condition. This particular set of irons is two iron through to nine iron and the wedge. Uh, it doesn't have a sand wedge so uh, for, for today's game I'm using a Slazinger Gary Player uh, sand wedge. You can see on the bottom sand iron there and also a nice uh, picture of the claret jug, uh, the prize for winning the open. Uh, 56 degrees of loft and to finish we have the putter after last uh, episode's dreadful display of putting using the Slazinger Lucky 13 which I have to say is the most difficult putter I've ever used I've gone for a more uh, traditional uh, blade type or what I would call a flanged blade this has got a nice flange on the bottom which gives it a little bit extra weight uh, so I call this a flanged blade it's quite a lot of offset on there not a big fan of that myself i prefer it to be more in line with the the hosel but it puts very nicely all the same and this is a leyland club uh, leyland were a sort of mid-tier manufacturer uh, leyland autograph and the autograph on the bottom is ralph moffitt i don't know whether you can see that so get it into the focus correctly Ralph Moffat, who was a Ryder Cup player, uh, quite a famous golfer in his time. Uh, another very nice ferrule. As you've probably noticed, I've got a bit of a weakness for ferrules. Um, they do come in various styles and colours, and some of them are very attractive. And finally, the grip. A nice grip on this one, with a gold thread uh, woven through it. Another leather grip. And we can see here a flat side on it which gives you something to line the putter up with, put your thumbs down on the flat side. Just coming quickly back to the irons, um, something that people might wonder is uh, how easy is it to change between sets uh, every week as I, as I currently do. And the way I do that is I, I just measure the loft of the club. Uh, I know pretty much uh, how I, far I hit each, each loft. Uh, so if I just measure the loft on that club, I can then get a good idea of how far that club's going to go. 
I don't use anything fancy to do that. I've just got one of these cheap uh, level meters. And it's just a matter of placing that, getting the club square, placing that on there and tilting that. And then we can see the loft on there. Uh, this two, two iron is 19 degrees. But I'll put the rest of the, uh, the lofts up so that you can see uh, if you're interested exactly what they are. Just coming quickly back to the head again. This is a forged head. I'm 99% sure of that. Stainless steel as most British made um, iron heads were. Um, but because this is such an old design, I'm sure it would have been forged orig originally. Castings didn't really come out. Uh, until just after the Second World War in the UK and a little bit later than that in America. So it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a forged head. But just looking at the ball again, I'll just put that down there so you can see uh, exactly how big the head is. It's not that clear because the, the camera's quite close to the ball, so I'll show a, 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 a view from directly above uh, from the golfer's eye perspective will give you a better idea. As promised here are the lofts of the clubs I'm using today and again the irons are about two clubs weaker than a modern set. Onto the course then. I'm going to play four holes and see if I can beat the dismal result of the last video of six over par for three holes. Fingers crossed. Not a bad strike and I'm reached the front of the green for a front flag. Two puts and it's a par. Up and running. This hole is a straightaway par five with a few bunkers at the halfway point. Shank. The shanks are still there. Unfortunately I was unable to find this ball so I uh, invoked the local rule and dropped a ball down. Rather than playing three I played five and I hit a good shot to the green. Should be able to get this down in two puts. Almost made it. And that's a two put for a seven. On to the next hole and I'm hitting driver again. But before I do that, let's just stop and talk a little bit more about Walter Hagen. Walter Hagen was a very successful American professional. He won 11 majors. The first in 1914 and the last in 1929, so all in the Hickory era, and before the Masters had even been thought of. If the Masters had been around, his tally might have been even higher. He also did a great amount of work in raising the status of professional golfers. In the early 1900s, professionals weren't even allowed in most clubhouses and were considered the, the sort of the lower end of the workers. Walter Hagen, through his charisma and personality, managed to raise the status of professional golfers and paved the way for the situation as we see it today. He also started a very successful club manufacturing business that was eventually taken over by Wilson, and Wilson made the clubs that I'm using today. OK, back to the golf then.
the swing is still looking pretty rusty but it's better than it was last week okay 97 into the wind not a very nice lie i'm gonna hit a nine iron A long put with a tear to go up. Let's see what we can do. Gave it a little bit too much trying to get over the tear, and I've just run off the back edge. Good, good attempt there, just licked out. So that's a six, another double bogey. Trouble down the right on this hole. So that's where I push it. I think making these videos is going to help my game because it, I can see all the errors that I make. 64 yards left. Meanwhile, looks at it, it's on in the sand ledge. Just off the green with that approach shot, long put for par quite there but I should get this one even I can hold those down for a five which leaves me at five over par for the four holes so I beat the target of last week's video that concludes the playing part of the video and we'll now have a look in more detail at the irons that were used here we can see two pages from a George Nicholl catalogue of about 1955. On the left we can see the description for the pin splitter model, pretty much exactly like the ones I've just played with, only they have a dark coated shaft rather than the chrome option that were on the ones that I used. Below the irons you can see the woods that were available with these. Unfortunately I don't have those and so I use the Walter Hagen woods. On the right is a page that describes in a little bit more detail the Hand of Friendship clique mark which I mentioned earlier. The company George Nicholl was founded in 1881 in Leven in Scotland and in the early days were a very innovative company. They celebrated their centenary in 1981 but sadly closed a year later and were absorbed by Swilken. We'll talk about Swilken in a later video. To end we'll look at some variations of the pin splitter irons. On the left we can see a set from the 1930s with a punch dot face and you can see the back of the head is pretty much identical to the ones I've just used. Top right is the one that's called the pin pointer which is identical in every way apart from it's got an offset head. And below that we can see the club that was released to celebrate the centenary of George Nicholl, the pin splitter 1881. But as we've already heard, the company folded within a year, and so this club never had a chance to achieve the popularity of the pin splitter that we've played with today. Is it the most popular British club ever? I think it's got a good chance. Well, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did like it, please click the like and press the subscribe. See you next time.